And I wondered if you thought that under the, the, the current BBC, you, that, that a programme like Monty Python would be commissioned today, whether it would... No, I'm sure it wouldn't have been commissioned. I think... Uh, um, focus groups, probably. Yeah, you'd have had focus groups. Um, you'd have had... The, demo, what's the demographic? You know, in fact, um, <laughs> when, we were, when we were first mooting the, the, the thing, um, we went in to see the BBC, and there were these men in suits uh, sitting there, and they said... Um, well, um, what's, the, what's, what's the programme going to be about? And we said, well, we don't know, really. And they said, oh, was it going to have music in it? And we said, could do, perhaps, you know. Um, and they said, oh, well, well, who's it aimed at? And we said, well, we don't know. I mean, and they, they said, well, well, what's it going to be called? We said, well, no idea. And then he said, oh, no, 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 no. And they said, well, well, look, we can only let you have 13 programmes. <laughs> I mean, that would never happen now. No, it just couldn't happen. Uh, um, John Lloyd, a producer of QI, always says that in, you know, when he was in the BBC in the 70s, he said it was you know, the only job better than being producer was probably being the di mm. director general. Mm. But there was, you were basically given a room and some people and told to go away mm. and have some ideas and make some programmes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I, I remember uh, uh, Hugh Weldon and David Attenberg uh, g uh, talking to us at the, in, when I was working in the BBC uh, um, and telling us that the BBC took pride in the fact that it didn't censor itself. So the heads of department didn't look at the programmes before they went out. They trusted the producers. And then they'd look at them when they went out, and if they if there was anything objectionable or something they didn't like, the producer would be holed over the coals at the next uh, weekly meeting. Um, but it was, it was the, the producers had independence, they had autonomy, and they could, and, and it, you know, what, it, it, they, if they decided to make a programme, they'd make the programme. Um, and now uh, it it's goes through committee after committee after committee. One person agrees to, uh, to, uh, to release something. And, uh, uh, and it's, um, it, it's, it's... I'm interested also in the idea that uh, what, what stuff that travels. I mean, you're, uh, as somebody who's tried to sell ideas to America, one of the things I always love is when they come back and tell us, oh, we couldn't possibly, you know, QI. We love the show. Oh, we love the show. We love to, but it's, you know, it's too English, too quirky. Mm. So I will say, and this, you know, how, how did it work with Python? Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing could be more, and, and yet, I mean, it's still, and, and then, they, they, of course, they, either they give you a blank look, because mm. a lot of the, one of the curious things about that I find in both television and publishing now are people who have no deep knowledge of the medium that they're working in. They've come from some yeah. other yeah. part of the universe yeah. to, to, um, to, to, to make sure that the bottom line is being looked mm. after. So they, either they haven't heard of Python or they look slightly embarrassed at their shoes and say, well, yeah, well, <laughs> you know, sketch shows we can do. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, how Python got on in the States was because there was one man who ran the uh, PBS channel, the public yeah, broadcasting yeah. channel in uh, in. Uh, in Dallas, Texas, of all places, Ron de Villiers, his name was, and uh, he had heard about Python, and so he uh, phoned the BBC, uh, in BBC Enterprises in New York, and said, uh, could he see the shows? And the BBC Enterprises said, you, no, you, you, don't, you won't like them. Uh, it's, no, it's not a circus, you know. And he had to say, no, no, I really want to see the show. No, no, they did their best to try and persuade him not to take them. Anyway, and so he vainly persuaded them to send him the shows. And uh, they reluctantly sent them. <laughs> and, uh, and he had to get about 10 other stations uh, to agree to put them on. And so he twisted everybody's arms and, really? and got, and so they went on a very small number of PBS stations, but, and then people sort of, um, it just spread really. My, my sort of last question was just, I was really impressed by the way that the, uh, the, the Pythons dealt with YouTube. Um, you know, the fact that obviously uh, the, the shows were being downloaded Ill illegally left, right and centre. And um, you created that brilliantly funny. <laughs> I don't know whether it was a sort of a rear guard action, but you, but you, was it? I mean, you've obviously you scrubbed up some of the some of the material, yeah. and, and 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 well, well, I actually, I mean, I was a bit against it. <laughs> I, I felt, you know, it's a bit sort of, 
you know, I, mean, I, I love YouTube and I just think it's great. Uh, it's a great thing. So, um, uh, but it was the idea that getting to, you can get sort of better quality stuff. Yeah. On the, that, 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 uh, that's probably... It's very difficult, though, that model, I mean, of, of how, do you, how do you control mm. copyright when mm. everything is basically... Yeah. So I mean, they're only sort of clips anyway, yeah. so it's not really... Well, the, the positive thing is that I, what I've discovered is there's a whole generation. My, my eldest boy's 13 mm -hmm. and his brothers are a bit younger, but they're all Python fans, well, almost think, entirely through YouTube. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's what I think. That's why I was against sort of, uh, you know, <laughs> limiting it, was that, uh, that it's a great advertising medium and it's like cutting off your nose to spite your face, really. Yeah.